Okay, let's look at this one. So, yesterday's videos were all pretty... Ah, crap. One of these days I'll remember to do this, guys. One of these days. Okay. Uh, yesterday's videos... If it lets me... Oh, there we go. Uh, all of these equations were pretty much like one or two step. They were very uh, linear, and even, and even though these aren't linear equations, but they were linear in format, meaning they were all first degree, okay? And, and they, they included just using inverse operations uh, to get them done, like so. Okay, this was about the hardest one we did yesterday, which was still fairly simple, just isolating the trigonometric term, okay? Um, the process for solving trigonometric equations we talked about here, again, this is not like hard and fast, cut and dry, do this first, then do this, okay? I don't like giving you step-by-step -step procedures, and it's because of problems that look like this. Because if you look at this problem and you think, all right, step number one, I have to have everything in terms of sine, cosine, or tangent. If that's how you approach this problem, you're going to get stuck, right? If you look at this and you say, okay, I should FOIL this because I've got two binomials, and let's see what happens if we, if we start FOILing, okay? I'll tell you right now, no bueno, all right? Now, this problem is actually, although it lo looks intimidating right off the bat, it's set up pretty nicely for you right away because in the process of solving a trigonometric equation, we can take the approach of factoring the expression and setting it equal to zero, right? Set it equal to zero and split. Use what we call the zero product property. The zero product property is what we did back in unit two when we were finding the zeros of polynomial functions. And we would factor, factor, factor. Then we'd pull each factor away and say each one of these could be zero, okay? That's the zero product property. So that, this problem is set up for that right now. Okay, what we have at the beginning of this problem is two quantities where the product is equal to zero. So that must mean this binomial could be zero or this binomial, oops, or this binomial could equal zero. Okay? Did everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Now we're just solving two equations. Now each one of these equations fits the mold of starting from the beginning. Write everything in terms of tangent, cotangent, or sine, cosine, or tangent. Set equal, or uh, isolate the trigonometric term. So the first thing that we're going to do is subtract one over to this side. Then we're going to take the arc tangent of both sides. So we're taking the arc tangent of negative 1. And like I said in yesterday's videos, you should probably have a unit circle near you unless you have it memorized up here. Okay? Because the answer to this is any pi value that has a tangent value of negative 1. And I know we've gone through this before, the tangent values that you should be familiar with, radical 3, 1, radical 3, over 3, okay, or 0. Those are the only four values of tangent that we are familiar with that, help, that the unit circle helps us to answer. The two that have the radical 3s are pi over 3 and pi over 6. So when the, what pi value has a tangent value of 1, those are our pi over 4 angles, but which pi over 4 angles have a negative value, meaning a negative value of tangent? Where is tangent negative, right? Remember all the stuff that we built back in unit 4, okay? We're still using it here, right? We've talked about this before. We've talked about this quite a bit, right? We said sine values are positive, cosine values are positive, tangent values are positive. Sine values are positive, cosine values are negative, this marker isn't working, tangent values are negative, so on and so forth. Tangent is positive down here, tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. 
I don't think it's the marker. I think it's the uh, the board itself. It's been it's like it's like an old car that hasn't been started for a while. We got to break it in a little bit. Anyway, what pi value pi over four value is in quadrant two? That's three pi over four. What pi value is in quadrant four? That's seven pi over four. We don't have to cut. We don't have to restrict our arc tangent to quadrants four and one. We said that yesterday. Okay. Now, something came up in the homework. I think somebody asked about this yesterday, and I, I, I apologize for not addressing it sooner. The questions here can get asked in two ways. Okay. And this is this is again a math Excel quirk, but I I got to put this out there. Okay. If they say solve for x or find all values of x, and we get these two values, that means an angle at 3 pi over 4 here, right? So it is it was just the marker, because this marker seems to be working fine. Okay? This is the angle 3 pi over 4. It has a tangent value of negative 1, but so does every coterminal angle with it. Meaning, if we start here, go all the way around, and then end here, the tangent of that, that, that angle is also negative 1. So we, we address all of the possible angles by, at the very end, saying plus 2 pi n. So what this means is these are the two spots those are the two landmarks that have tangent values of negative 1, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. But if you make a full rotation around the unit circle from 3 pi over 4 and you end in the same spot, that's also a solution. And if we make one rotation, that would be 2 pi. If we make two rotations, that would be 4 pi. Okay? So on and so forth. That's if they don't restrict the range of values. Sometimes they ask this question and they say for angles from 0 to 2 pi. And that's the way that I was addressing it yesterday. Okay. So technically speaking the correct answer would be these two angles plus 2 pi n. But we can just, I, I was just putting a box around this yesterday. Okay. So Hopefully that, that sits all right. Let's talk about this second equation. I'm going to switch up the color just so we don't get too confused. Um, we want to write everything in terms of sine, cosine, or tangent. We can do that. We can call this 1 over sine x minus radical 2 equals 0. It's a little odd to look at it that way. Okay but I want to isolate that trig term. So I'm going to add the radical 2 to the other side. And we talked about this yesterday. If you're solving for that, and it's in the denominator of a fraction, you can switcheroo it and bring the sine x out to the side. But we're not supposed to leave that radical in the denominator. So we have sine x equals radical 2 over 2. All I did, I'm sorry if I skipped this, but I don't know what your tolerance is for seeing this so many times. We have to multiply by radical 2 on the bottom and the top to rationalize that denominator. And it's a good thing we come up with one of these sine values that we're used to seeing. The arc sine of radical 2 over 2 is equal to x. What pi values have y values of radical 2 over 2? That's pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. How do I know it's those two values? Because those are where the y coordinates are positive in quadrants 1 and, three, or one and 2. Sorry. And then again we can say plus 2 pi n bit of redundancy in our solution, but that's okay. We have 3 pi over 4 for both of them. Okay?